Hi friends, today we're going to see how to deal with the impacted maxillary canines from the implantology point of view. Let's go with it. My name is Jose Luis Bonpel from DLR Surgery and together with my partner in crime, Dr. Juan Lara, we're going to see how to deal with the maxillary impacting canine. I'm quite sure that all of you have already faced this situation. Nevertheless, the impacted canines are the second most common impacted tooth in the oral cavity, right after the wisdom tooth. That's why it's absolutely mandatory for all of us dedicated to oral surgery and implantology to know how to deal with this kind of situation. First of all, we need an X-ray, we need a CBCT, we need to make a good diagnosis in order to see if the canine is in the palatal side or the buccal side. Every single time we face a patient in their 18, 19s and we see that the canine, the permanent canine is not in the arch, we need to do this X-ray. Once we have already uh, confirmed the diagnosis saying that we have an impacted tooth, we need to send our patient to the ortho specialist. It is mandatory also to send it to the orthodontic. Why? Because many, many occasions, this, uh, this colleague may be able to uh, do some kind of uh, ortho treatment and place the canine into the, into the arch. We can't forget that a tooth is way better than an implant. That's very, very important to keep it in mind. Always a tooth is better than an implant. But what happens if our ortho specialist says he cannot place that tooth into the arch, our patient do not want to go under an ortho treatment or any other issues such as our kinin has a cyst or is way too horizontal or whatever and we do think that the best option is to extract the inclusion. At that moment, patient comes back to us and knowing if it's on the buccal or on the palatal side, we will do our surgery. As a summary in this diagnosis, I would say, first, we make sure we have an inclusion, we do the CDCT, we know if it's in the palatal or the buccal, we send it to the orthodontist, to the ortho specialist, and he will tell us if it's possible or not to place that canine into the arch. If it's not possible, we will have it back, we will have our patient back and we will propose him to do the surgery of the extraction of the canine and placement of an implant. And here we have the question, it is possible to do the extraction and implant placement at the same time? Yes, it is possible to extract, to remove that impacted canine and place an implant at the same time. How are we going to do this process? First thing, is the same approach that we are going to use if we would only remove an impacted canine. Intracircular incision, usually this tooth is located in the palatal part. We perform our incision intracircular, we raise a mucoperiosteal flap, the palatal flap, and first step, instead of removing, instead of doing the osteotomy with a bore, what we are going to use is a safe scraper. We are going to scrape the bone, we are going to harvest that bone, and when we get to the, to the crown of the canine, we will continue with a burr, with a diamond burr of a two-stem burr. So, doing this way, we are going to save a lot of bone that we will use afterwards. Second part is, once we have the crown exposed, we always have to luxate the tooth. Do not do the odontosection first, because if you do the odontosection first, you will have all the root without being luxated up there and it's going to be really difficult to remove. So what we have to do is first luxating the tooth and once it has some movement, then we can perform the intersection. We remove the crown and then we can remove the root because it's moving, it's already luxated. Now if we want to place an implant, the first thing we have to look for is if we can place it in the ideal 3D position. We need an implant driven by the prothesis. Remember, thinking always in the prothesis. How are we going to achieve primary stability in this big defect? Usually our choice is a 10 millimeter implant. We don't use very long implants, but in this case, it's an exception. 
we need for impacted uh, canines we need at least 14, 15, sometimes even 16 millimeters left implant because we are going to get the primary stability, the torque from the apex of the implant. And we are going to achieve that stability in the two, three, four millimeters of the apex of the implant. So we place our implant in the ideal position. And why this is important? Because usually the temporary canine is lower in the arch and if we place our implant right where the bone is, we will have again a temporary crown length. We don't want that knowing that the canine is the one who is highest in all the smile line. We need to place our implant 3-4 millimeters higher where do we need our crown to emerge. So submerge this kind of implants because a submerge implants always have solution but a very crystal implant does not have any solution just remove the implant so now we have placed the implant we are going to place all the bone we, we scraped before we're going to place it in the in the defect and we don't need to place any membrane because the palatal tissue has no muscle so it's gonna keep attached to the bone and it's going to keep our graft immobile and wait three, four months more or less to wait for the osteointegration period. Once we have uh, our osteointegration period done, we can check if we need some uh, tissue augmentation on the buckle or is not necessary and just send the patient to the prosto colleague to perform the crown. One surgery, we just remove the impacted canine, we place the implant, we graft and everything is done in one surgery. So guys, if you like this video, please place the like, subscribe, and comment that way you will help us to make the channel grow and remember we will always say keep in mind that the scalper on your hand but the prostate will work on your mind see you soon